Well, in this video series, we're going to go over chapter 2.5, looking at two quantitative variables, linear scatter plots, and linear correlation. All right, so we're going to look at, in this section, uh, scatter plots and the idea of correlation. We'll just do a quick review question. If you're given a box plot, how many hot dogs can you eat in 10 minutes? Well, as a box plot, given the number of hot dogs consumed in a 10-minute hot dog eating contest, what is the approximate median? Um, I hope you see that it is 60. The exact center of the box plot is 60. Just on top of this, it looks like uh, about 50% of the contestants ate between 54 hot dogs and 66. So don't forget the center box gives you the middle 50%. Okay, so we want to look at an association of two quantitative variables. So we say a positive association means that values of one variable tend to be higher when values, excuse me, uh, when values of the other variable are higher. And we say there's a negative association uh, between values of one variable tend to be lower when the values of the other variable are higher. So this is really a slope. Think about slope. This is positive association is positive slope. As one x value increases, the y value increases. Negative association means as x value increases, then y value will decrease. And then finally, we say that two variables are not associated or have little to no association if knowing the value of one variable does not give you any information about the value of the other variable. All right, let's look at a couple of examples before we go to any graphics and data. All right, for the two variables, the amount of fertilizer used and the yield of the crop, do we expect the association to be positive, negative, or have no association. We would hope if this was a good fertilizer for the given crop, this should be positive correlation. Up to a certain point, of course, but up to a point, adding fertilizer should yield a greater crop. Okay, for the variables, number of cigarettes smoked per day and lung capacity. Do we expect the association between those two variables to be positive, negative, or no association? All right, hopefully you guess that this is a negative correlation. Generally, the more cigarettes you smoke, the lower your lung capacity is going to be. Generally, of course, there's always exceptions and outliers to any uh, data set, but the, as a general trend, that would probably happen. What about the age of the husband and the age of the wife? How do we expect that association to be positive, negative, or none? And generally, we'd expect this to be a positive correlation. Older people, 60, 70, 80 year olds, are more likely to be married to other older people than to younger people. And of course, there's always the exceptions to the rule, but the general trend is this would be a positive correlation. All right, let's look at one more. The depth of tire tread and the number of miles driven on the tires. Do you expect the correlation to be, or the association to be positive, negative, or have no association? If you think about it here, the more you drive on your tires, the less the depth of the tire tread. Eventually you get uh, bald tires and change your tires. So this is going to be a negative correlation. As you drive more often, the tire tread is going to get thinner or smaller tread. Okay, so I want to look at some more car data. We're going to look at uh, six quantitative variables from cars. Uh, these are car information given from a Consumer's Reports Guideline in 2015. 
we're looking at the weight of a car, the miles per gallon in city, so not highway, but you know, in city driving miles per gallon, fuel efficiency, fuel capacity, how many total gallons does the car have, the page number in the report. So these are used to be, I probably still are because the reports are printed out, it's a big magazine. So the page number of the car, the time it takes for the car to accelerate and go one quarter of a mile in seconds, and acceleration time from zero to 60 miles per hour. So what I want you to do right now is think about six different relationships. What do you think weight versus city miles per gallon is? What about weight versus fuel capacity? The page number the car is on, consumer's report, versus fuel capacity. The weight versus quarter mile, it's time to go a quarter of a mile. The acceleration time from zero to 60 miles per hour versus the quarter mile time. And then the city miles per gallon versus the quarter mile time. All right, so what I'd like you to do is uh, pause this video in a second. And for each of these five situations, where would you put these? Like very strong, negative, all the way to no association, and then all the way to a strong, positive correlation. And on the video lesson, I want you to um, list out for these six relationships, what do you think it is? So go ahead and pause the video. For each of these six scenarios, what do you think would be? Do you think that strong negative, moderate negative, weak negative, no association, and so on? Okay, we're going to come back to this these data sets in a little while. But first, I want to look at the most, uh, kind of one of the most basic ways of visualizing two quantitative variables, and that's the scatter plot. So here we have a sample of students looking at how many hours they study per week versus their GPA. So if you look right here, there's one person that looks like they said they study 10 hours a week, but have a 4.0 GPA. This would be a little bit of an outlier. And on the flip side, we have a student here that says they study 70 hours a week, and it looks like they have about a 3.8, 3.9 GPA. And you might say this is another outlier. The student that studies 60 hours a week also has the same, you know, 3.8, 3.9 GPA. And then we have a whole bunch of students kind of bunched up in the middle. If I were to highlight this data point, this corresponds to, again, someone who's close to a 4.0, and it looks like they study about 45 hours a week. Okay, so we're going to go back to those car associations that I asked you to look at earlier. So here on the upper left, we have the weight of the car and the city miles per gallon. So hopefully you saw that, oh, as the weight of the car increases, the lower the miles per gallon you're going to get, the fuel efficiency. Or on the flip side, you could think the higher the fuel efficiency of the car, the lighter, the lower weight the car is likely going to be. If you take the fuel capacity versus the weight, this is, I would say, a strong correlation here because it's not on a direct straight line, but the higher the fuel capacity of the car, this is the size of the fuel that you could fill up your car with, 12 gallons, 15 gallons, 20 gallons. The bigger that is, the larger the weight of the car. So larger cars need more fuel. Hopefully you saw that the page number in the consumer reports should have really nothing to do with fuel capacity. In fact, page number, this is done alphabetically. So you know, I drive a Subaru, I'd be towards the end of consumer's reports. Somebody who drives an Acura is going to be at the beginning of consumer's reports, just purely alphabetical. So this is, a, I see this is like a, a shotgun blast, like a scatter, complete scattering of all the data. So this right here would have little to no association. Weight in quarter of a mile, we can see there's a little bit, it's weak, but a little bit of a negative association. 
is the longer it takes to uh, drive a quarter mile, generally means the lower weight of the car. But it's not definitely as strong here as uh, the weight versus city miles per gallon. There's definitely cars that weigh more that have very powerful engines that will uh, do a quarter mile very quickly. And versus here, we have the quarter mile versus acceleration. This is almost on a direct line, which hopefully this makes sense to you. The speed at which a car could complete a quarter mile is very, very directly related to how fast they can get to 60 miles per hour. It's so almost a perfect correlation right here. And then we have the time it takes to quarter mile versus city miles per gallon. This would be a positive correlation, but moderate to weak correlation. Because the idea is the longer it takes to do that quarter mile, the better fuel efficiency your car is going to get, but not exactly. Okay, so I've been mentioning correlation a lot in the last slide. It is a purely mathematical measure. So correlation is pure mathematics, and it measures the strength and direction of linear association between two quantitative variables. So I highlight again, correlation is pure mathematics, especially with computers and software, figuring out correlation in modern times in the late 2010, 2020s, this is actually fairly simple. You can upload data into lots of different software, most of which are free, and get correlation. You're going to get two different um, notations for correlation, just like we did with mean and proportion. If we're dealing with a sample, we use lowercase r. And if we're dealing with the population, we're dealing with the Greek letter rho. Unfortunately, that looks like a little scripty P. Sometimes I, uh, in handwriting, I'll do a P with a little curl on it. But just keep in mind, population correlation is rough. All right, so I want to look at what the properties of correlation. Um, in class, I'm going to go over a, one example on how to calculate correlation by hand. It's again, not difficult, just a little bit tedious, and I expect you to calculate correlation with software, with static key or some other software package. So I want to focus now on what the properties of correlation, looking at these six uh, data sets, six comparisons of two quantitative variables. The weight versus city miles per gallon, that's a negative 0.83. I'm just going to list these up here. I should think about the patterns as I show the correlation of all these data sets. Weight versus fuel capacity is 0.19. The weight versus quarter of a mile is negative 0.39. The acceleration versus quarter mile time is 0.99. City miles per gallon and quarter mile is 0.65. And lastly, we have the page number of fuel capacity. Look, this has pretty much no correlation or little to none. That's minus 0.15. So if you want to think about these values, notice they're all between minus 1 and 1. If the correlation is negative, then we should get a negative correlation value. And I want to argue the stronger, the closer the data fits a straight line, the more likely it's going to be 1 or minus 1. And if we look at something which just looks like a shotgun blast, it's purely random, that's going to be closer to 0. So we get properties of correlation. As I said before, it's always going to be between minus 1 and 1. It could be the actual values of 1 or minus 1. The sign indicates the direction of association. So if there's positive correlation, R is positive, negative, R is negative, and no or little to no correlation, R is going to be close to zero. And as I said before, R is going to be uh, the closer it is to plus or minus one, the stronger the data is going to fit a straight line. And lastly, R has no units and does not depend on the units of measurement. So R is purely just a numerical value between minus 1 and 